Romance. Um, Hello and welcome to Sullivan's Farm. We're on first cut silage part B today, or, or we have been the last couple of days. So cut a few extra paddocks that probably might have been cut last week, but I just wasn't watching them closely enough. But the lighter crop, but the grass will bounce back quicker and we're kind of in charge of the situation a little bit again. So I think there was only maybe four, four and a half bales to the acre this time. But again, it's leafy stuff, hadn't headed out, so we'll see how it goes. Now, go back, that's a look at it. I'm just drawing in the last few bales out of it here. Um, I still haven't switched around that power take off. I know it's the wrong way around. I'll switch it now when I'm finished this time. And um, we go from there. Sail along to John Denver today. There's the bale we're looking for. I got the grass seed for the field that we're reseeding out there as well. The, the field where the fodder rape was over the winter. Um, it's been sprayed off now. There's 14 days past, so we're, we're ready to rock. The man is due, kind of today, hopefully, but equally, there's no sign of rain in the forecast, so there's not a huge rush all of a sudden to get it in because there's no point in setting it and, and no supper rain to wash it in. But I got the seed anyway, just to have it here because I thought he was coming today. It's a fairly plain grass seed mix. Um, there it is. I don't know which, <clears throat> I'm not sure what brand it is. Is that it there? And the important thing, I suppose, the, the bit that was that I was looking at is the fact that there's three quarters of a kilo of clover in it. I wanted to put in about two, key, two kgs of clover. So I bought separate clover seed um, and I'm just mixing it in here now manually. So it's, it's evenly mixed in each of the bags. All we need then is the supper rain and we're laughing. And just like that, we have the four bags ready to rock, topped up with clover. And as I said, we just need that supper rain now and we're right. Cattle are enjoying the bit of heat and the sunshine as well. Still slowly getting through the copper leak. Hopefully. Just doing something for them. There's only a few now that have that little bit of an orangey red tinge. So hopefully the lick is working. Is just as well she doesn't know what I'm saying, but I'm hoping that one, her and her comrade were the two best calves there last year. They're the two best cattle now, but her and her comrade will hopefully be the first two on the hook in September. There's another one now that's nearly two years, well, she's around two years old now. She was just a little bit small to try and finish inside in the shed, so we left her out. I will finish her in the next couple of weeks as well. <laughs> bit of a contrast then for uh, this one. She was one of the smallest calves last year. She's one of the few with that orangey red fur on her now. Hard to see in the sun. And she's going to be one of the smallest for a while yet. Go on, Mrs. Go on till we have a look at you. We don't want to see your head. We want to see the rest of you. The rump and the tail and the flesh and the... I don't know if I'm looking for beef to the heel here. I was half boasting there in one video a while ago about... We've 30 acres and 30 paddocks and aren't I the great man and all that kind of stuff. But this is more like the reality. I had to put up this fence there the other night to let the big cattle in. But the calves are here. This is the, the nursery paddock. They go into first when they come out of the shade. Wish it was gone too strong for them and the cattle needed to cut in and graze it. It's even actually gone a little bit heavy for the cattle, but we can kind of encourage them to graze it down. We can't do that with the cave, so. I'd love to tell you it is the first time I did that, but I have a recollection of doing the same thing last year, so. Ah, uh, I, might, I might put up a few permanent stakes around there, just to help, because they're going to be, this is going to be the field that the calves will come out into first, so. We'll see, not a job for today. Just because we're passing them. I didn't go looking for Moratton, but there's a nice limousine cross bullock. He'll be a fair tank this time next year, but it won't be me bringing him till this time next year. He'll be one of the ones going in the autumn. Depending on the weather, we'll see how far we get with him, but I'm not going putting a whole load of cattle inside into those cubicles again this winter. It is a pity. It'd be nice to be finishing the likes of that fella. He'll leave a nice little taste after him. Just to close out on the potential 
suckler cows that I was going to turn some of them heifers into, I'm not going to do it. I was thinking about it and some of them would probably make nice heifers and nice cows, but that's not really a long-term option for me here. So I'm going to keep it simple. And as somebody said in one of the comments on a previous video, all that heifer needs is a hook. Um, so that's, that's what she's going to get. I don't know if the rain will wash it off, but I'm going to try and mark these bales. These are the last ones that came in that I was bringing in earlier in the video from the, the lighter paddocks. So we'll see if the quality of them is any different to the ones say, that were brought in for the, the first first cut. Um, maybe the rain will wash it off, but I've put a bit of insulating tape here as well. The rain won't wash that off. Um, then I got a bit carried away with the old artistic thing. Don't ask me what it is. Um, we put a few marks on a few of them just to see. I've written it down as well, but it's only for my own benefit more than nothing else. And like a lot of other things that I try around here, there's probably going to be nothing to report and no difference to be seen between them, but it just keeps things a little bit interesting. Probably no need to mark these ones. I'll just leave them out here on their own. These are from this time last year. And I'd say the cattle that we were looking at out in the field now would probably get them when the weather turns. Like there's, there's nothing at all wrong with them. There's, I suppose, the odd hole, little hole here and there in some of them, but they should do the big cattle okay. There's another experiment that didn't work out. I was putting a water tap and a hose here outside the shed, but just kind of didn't work out. So we just dismantled it and taken it down, take it down again. It didn't cost me anything, only half an hour, I suppose, to set it up. We better show you the calves while we're passing them to. I moved them there a while ago. And kind of a few chess moves there now, after I saw just how much grass is growing in different fields around here, in particular out in the far off knock, but this grass, just about right, I think, for the calves anyway. Probably a cover of just over a thousand. Now, missus, don't mind licking that. Eat them cubes. There's always one or two that don't eat their allocation, and then the others eat theirs for them, so sure. I don't know how we'll ever solve that one. Since I started making the video, we've had the sod busted up. It was here as well. Now, still no sign of rain in the forecast, so we won't be taking the seed out of the shed just yet, but it's come up fairly well so far. And no stones, that's the main thing. Hard to get young lads to pick stones these days, and very hard to get their feathers to pick stones as well, so none of us are going to start that crack anytime soon. A little accident here with the water truck, when the man was here with the power harrow earlier, but look, these things happen the whole time. He was trying to keep in, doing the right thing, trying to keep in, and I wasn't after telling him about the water truck behind the nettles. So there was just a little touch on it, and the, the water pipe cracked off. But if that was the biggest problem I had today, I'd be laughing. It is an old thing in Otten, as a cousin said one time, it is the kind of thing you'd fix with a belty or cap. As well as putting up the YouTube videos themselves, I put up the odd short here and there as well and they usually get four or 5,000 views, all going well. I put up one a few weeks ago with um, the boss's boss, my other half in the video, or in the short of herself feeding the calves. And when I checked before I started recording this, it had got 1.6 million views. So I thought we better get her to say hello after all that and introduce her properly. So do you want to say hello? Can you see yourself? I can, unfortunately. Hello. I'm Tracy. I'm the long suffering. Sorry, I'm the other part of the team um, behind the scenes more often, um, thankfully. So, um, yeah. Do you want to tell us then where you met the very handsome man himself? <laughs> oh, isn't it very twee? It was a holiday romance um, 23 years ago, year 2000 in Lanzarote. Um, I was on holiday with my sister and a couple of friends and walked into a little bar and here he was serving the important See, stuff. See, that's herself. So uh, another question, I'm going to put her on the spot now and ask her like, why, why were you talking to the calves or why do you think that's important? Can we learn something from you? <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's just instincts really, I suppose. I just, they're babies. Having had three of them myself, um, ourselves, I suppose just really a calm presence, a calm voice. 
I, thankfully, it doesn't really matter what you say to them, which is just as well. But uh, a bit like me, I don't listen yeah. either. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. That's it then for this video. More silage, more cattle moved, and herself said hello. I had a job to persuade her, but sure, look, it, I suppose it's easier to do it rather than listen to me whinging about it. So thanks a million for watching. We'll talk to you soon and I hope you're enjoying the weather. Good luck.